Hey sportsman, John Bergsman here with the Fisherman's Digest Hot Bites Fishing Report. Now we're here in the second week of June and trust me, summer is here full bore here in the state of Michigan. It's hot, we got five hot reports for you. We're gonna start in Monroe, Michigan for an awesome walleye report by Captain Nick. We're gonna jump all the way to the other end of the state. You couldn't get further away from Monroe than the Western UP and Lake Gogebic, but that's where we're going after that. Then we'll drop back to Saginaw Bay up to Sault Ste. Marie, and we'll finish off in Lake Erie in the Central Basin, a brand new reporter there out of Ashtabula, Ohio in that Geneva, Ashtabula area. Stay tuned, we got five awesome reports. We'll be right back with a Hot Bites fishing report. So today we've got an awesome report, Captain Nick Dode, from Real Live Action Sport Fishing Charters tells us that the fishing in Monroe, Michigan is quote unquote, as good as he has ever seen it. And Nick has seen some stuff there. So this is amazing fishing. Now walleyes are being caught out basically the whole length of the shoreline from Bulls Harbor out in front of Sterling State Park all the way down to the Ohio line. It seems like 20 to 23 feet of water is a no fail zone. If you get your boat in that and you get yourself a set of either bottom bouncers within one to three feet of the bottom or bandits, flicker minnows or flicker shads in that mid depth from mid depth down to three, four foot off the bottom, you're gonna catch fish. And I mean catch fish fast. So. 30 to 70 back probably on flicker minnows or bandits. You're gonna be running two to three ounce bottom bouncers. I would suggest you run two ounce bouncers off your boards and three ounce bouncers off the butt of the boat. A lot of the best colors have been in, on the bright days, you know, you're gonna to go to metallics and on the darker cloudy days or in the dingier water, you're gonna to go to the fluorescence. That's really been the only ticket. Purples, golds are always going to work on dark days. The silvers, the chromes, things like that are going to work on the bright sunny days. But right now, Monroe, Michigan is slamming with um, unbelievable catches of walleye. Practically, put your fish in, put in your, your limit in the boat and with three guys maybe in two or three hours. Monroe, Michigan, Sterling State Park, 20 to 23 feet of water, pretty much any way you want to present your bait. You know, if you're an angler, you need space for all your stuff. I'm Captain Lance Valentine. Let me show you how the Polar Craft Kodiak gives you enough room to put everything you need for a great day of fishing. A huge rod locker to hold a bunch of rods with battery storage underneath for your front trolling motor. Two sides of wing storage to put all your tackle boxes and all the stuff you need for fishing. And an in-floor spot to put wet storage. Anchors, ropes, drift socks, and everything you have to have a good day on the water. Hey. Visit your local Polar Craft dealer and check out the Kodiak and all the really cool features. You're going to love what you see. So our next report from, is up from the Timbers Resort up on the shores of Lake Gogebic. And Tim Long tells me that he's got a good mixed bag action going of some early season perching, early season walleye, and right now is prime time for great big smallmouth bass. Now Lake Ogebic is not often talked about as a smallmouth bass destination, but trust me, as you'll see on this upcoming 2021 year show, smallmouth bass is a real viable species to catch and catch in numbers there on Lake Gogebic. They get big there. I couldn't believe the average size of the fish. And they're pretty readily available, pretty much from late May, depending on the year and your weather, all the way to the end of June. You know, Lake Ogebic's a big lake, so it holds that colder temperature just a little bit longer, which stretches out that shallow water time frame that those smallmouth bass are in. And one of the cool things about Lake Ogebic is that you're gonna catch walleye and big perch right along with the smallies in those shallow water edges and in those bays. Now, how would you present your bait to these fish? Well, of course, if they're roaming pre-spawn or post-spawn, Nothing almost is better than a Strike King 375 swim bait. So casting those with a little bit, you know, now it's gonna have a little color to the water, so maybe a baby bass, 
color with the green top and the pearl bottom is going to work good. Another really good color there would be AU because it's got that little greenish and that yellower belly to it. Those are two really good colors for that time of the year. If you find them on beds and you're going to fish them, you can pretty much throw a tube or a wacky worm, a weightless wacky worm on them and they'll take those readily. Now, the cool thing about fishing with the swim bait is if you downsize, you'll catch a lot of walleye. So maybe a 275 rage, a 2.75 rage swimmer up to a 325 rage swimmer might be a great ticket. And all I would really do is pull the old Zona trick, which is when you're casting that rage swimmer out, rather than just crank and reel it in steadily, which almost everybody does, let that thing two or three times during a retrieve, stop your reel, let it sink all the way and come in contact with the bottom, rip snap it off the bottom, reel a few more cranks, stop, let it fall all the way to the bottom. If you it count, contact the bottom three or four times in a retrieve, you increase dramatically the number of walleye you're gonna catch. And Gogebic has got a lot of walleye, so it's a great way to double up and combo up on both walleye and smallmouth. So right now is go time, the whole month of June, there on Lake Gogebic. If you're looking for great accommodations or a guide, Tim from the Timbers Resort, Tim and Sarah can hook you up and put you not only up in a great cabin right on the shores of the lake, they've got rental boats, they've got a great little tackle store right there, plus they've got all the contacts for all the guides in the area. That's the Western UP Lake Gogebic. Hey, Jeff Miller here today with Trax Tech Corporation. I'm going over one more application that we came up with this year for a lot of our guys with smaller trailerable boats, uh, especially like up in the nose where they're looking for additional rod storage. Quick and easy, but nice and solid mounting application for them. So we went back to our renowned pivoting base design that we have. We have a stainless steel plunger assembly in here so we can do adjusting up and down. And I'm gonna show you real quick, we can turn and rotate this thing anywhere we wanna go. We have it on one of our, just our rectangular bases that slides into our track, but this can actually, this bottom part right here can actually be used in conjunction on our rail mounts that we showed in some of our other videos. We can use it on our T-bolt brackets that go into all these boat manufacturers track systems that they're uh, incorporating right into their gunnel walls now. But uh, we're showing it into our track application here today and we've got uh, this mount, we make a three and a four inch arm extension on here, a bigger, longer plate, and we're supporting one of our standard RSU3 rod holder systems. We can do a three or a four bank rod holder on here. And with this having the adjustability, we can set it up in the nose of the boat with our piece of mounted track on there, put it to our location we want, and we just simply pull the pin drop this down inside the boat's gunnel walls, and now up in the nose of the boat, or even on the side wall you wanted, we've got rod storage uh, available for you that sits off to the side because most of our noses are starting to get curved up in the front, and this takes up that uh, application where we can drop this in and set it in anywhere we want it to go. So if we need it in a straight application, we virtually just lift and turn it and rotate it in there. But that gives us three to four more rod holder storage in an application we might not have been able to before because of the curvature in the nose of the boat. So go check Check it out, our section under rod storage at trextech.com. Thank you. Now we're going to slide all the way out of the UP over to Lake Huron in the greater Saginaw Bay area. Now, just a week ago, Brad from Angler Quest Pontoons and I spent a day on the water there on Saginaw Bay. And let me tell you, the fishing there is just stupid. There's no other way to describe it. We caught 32 nice keeper size walleyes in about a five hour period of time and we probably wasted the first two hours just trying to locate the fish. But we located them and for all you guys looking, right now if you're going out of Linwood Marine and you head straight out towards the spark plug right there at the shipping channel, it seems like there's good fish along both edges, both the west and the east side of the shipping channel, right there from the spark plug a mile north, a mile south. So you're running these flats. How are we catching the fish? Well, on our trip, we caught every single fish on a Trip Z30, that's a Dreamweaver diver, Trip Z30, with about an eight, seven, eight foot lead to a Dreamweaver mini spoon. Now, the spoon colors that seemed to be working the best were the gold spoons with any type of purple or brightly covered, colored UVs, like a mixed veggie or just an orange green stripe anything with a dot on it, but on that day we had a little bit of cloud cover going on, so the gold was good. If you get a bright sunny day, maybe the, the chromes would be the best as well. 
or UVs. But really you want to throw a lot of color at these Saginaw Bay fish and you want to get down into the mid depths. So we're running our trip Z's out 25 to 55 back. All right, 25 to 55 back on a trip Z30. That's a good mid, mid depth pull. We caught a ton of fish. I mean, it was nonstop at times. We had three or four on. We we're going two and a half miles an hour, so the bay is already warm and the bite is hot and the speeds aren't really the issue. So if you wanna get out there and have a great tr time, try implementing a spoon pattern for these fish at two and a half salmon speed behind offshore boards. I think you'll have a lot of success. You'll cover a lot of water and that's really the key at Saginaw. These fish will move around so you've really got to put a lot of miles under your hull. Once you find them then go ahead and figure eight on these fish when you get in a set where you've caught two, three, four, five fish. You can just make wide figure eight circles using the your, your Garmin coordinates as the center to where you're putting that figure eight. So again, Trip Z30s, small dream weaver spoons for tons of Saginaw Bay walleye. Are you in the market for a new trailer? For all your trailer needs, big or small, visit Beck's Trailer Superstore on Highway 127 north of St. John's. So we're going to head back over the bridge. We're going to head north all the way up to Sault Ste. Marie and the St. Mary's River system all the way down through Detour to Drummond Island. I just was there two days ago. That's right, two days ago with Captain John Goebel out of the Drummond Island area. We actually drove up into the Sault Ste. Marie region up onto Minuskong Bay and we were walleye fishing. We pulled a really nice limit of walleyes. We had a little trouble keeping them buttoned up, but uh, Justin from uh, Always an Adventure Charter had 20 the day we went. John had a full limit and probably had 30 the day before we went. So we just ran into a Captain Bad Luck syndrome there. But we had a great time. The fish were snapping there in Minuskong Bay and that six to 10 foot way, um, uh, depth in and around the reeds right there in front of Dan's uh, resort. So how were we catching these fish and, and presenting our bait? We were running small little Salmo crankbaits the really smallest one. We were letting them out all 30, 40 feet so that we were just ticking the bottom in six feet of water. And what's nice about those baits is when we were running them on the small crappie boards, the offshore crappie boards, so that they were real sensitive. And if you even got any weeds on them at all, you could tell right away the board's attitude would run differently. You just quick spin reel the thing in and short, short leaders are 30 feet, so you just clean your bait. And we spent a bunch of time cleaning our baits off, but I'll tell you what, there's a lot of fish right there in the Minuskong Bay right now, and I think this bite's gonna hold on for a good month. Now, the second half of the day, we slid down to Detour, and Detour had a really good bite going of smallmouth bass. But don't kid yourself, all the way to Sault Ste. Marie, any bay that's on the St. Mary's River that's got some three, four foot shallow sand is going to be loaded right now with smallies. They were just coming up. We aren't behind at all. Remember, the St. Mary's River is flowing out of Sault Ste. Marie, and that water is only about 55 degrees. So the St. Mary's River system as a whole is always a week or two behind the rest of the state when it comes to that smallmouth spawn. Plus, it extends that smallmouth spawn out two or three weeks. So if you plan a trip in the next two to three weeks uh, from this weekend all the way out for two, three weeks, you're still gonna encounter good numbers of great big smallmouth bass, St. Mary's River smallmouth bass. How were we catching them? Two simple ways. We were snap casting uh, rage swimmers. I was throwing a 375 Tennessee shad and it was working really good. I caught a lot of fish. Uh, my partner, John Goebel, was throwing a green pumpkin tube. He was also doing really well. It didn't seem to matter. And so you know, the fish were just coming up. We only saw a handful of beds. Most of what we were catching were roamers, pre-spawn roamers. So this bite is just getting rolling. So from Sault Ste. Marie all the way down through the detour passage, right now on the St. Mary's River, you can get awesome smallmouth bass fishing. And this is one of the most underrated systems in the country. So if you need a captain, give my buddy John Goble a call. Uh, he'll take you out there. He knows all the spots, whether it's walleye or whether it's bass from customized sport fishing charters up there in Drummond Island. Also the guys up in Sault Ste. Marie, Ken Smajinski and Dane Stanaway. All their information is on our website 
Fisherman'sDigest.com, touch the Sault Ste. Marie destination, and Ken and Dane's guiding information from up north is on there as well. But get yourself up to Sault Ste. Marie, experience the great eastern upper peninsula fishing that's going right now here in the month of June. Hey, are you in the market for a small outdoor shed, carport, or small storage building? Visit my friends up at Midwest Steel Carports. They'll travel anywhere in the lower peninsula to install your shed or carport for you. Visit them online at MidwestSteelCarports.com. So, we got a brand new destination here on Fisherman's Digest Hot Bites report. It's Ashtabula, the Geneva Ashtabula area of the central basin of Lake Erie. And we've got Chris from HLNS Sport Fishing Charters. That's hook, line, and sinker for all of you who need a little, lead a little education. He has got an awesome charter service there with his brother right there in the central basin. And I'm telling you what, I know a ton of you have gone out on charters and a ton of you have gone out on regular fishing here in the western basin. But if you want a truly cool experience, you gotta keep on driving to the east and get yourself over to that Lake Geneva, to uh, Ashtabula. I fish tournaments all the way to Dunkirk. And I'm telling you, the further you go, the deeper that water gets, the colder those walleyes stay for longer into the summer, and they are brutes over in that area. I remember in July having a tournament where it took 40, I think I was in third place on that Dunkirk tournament, and it took 40 pounds a day to get to third place. So it was a crazy good tournament. And Chris tells me the big girls are there, and they're set up beautifully. Now, where are they at? They're out there in 55 to 65 foot of water overall depth if you're going to take your own boat. And they're running bandits, basically 60 to 85 back, putting a good spread out. There's a little bit of stain in the water, Captain Chris tells me, so that you want to still stay with stuff that's got colors on it, high fluorescence, uh, you know, some, some baits that really stand out with a little bit of twinge, a, din, a, a twinge or a tweak of that color in the water. Even though it's central basin, it's not gin clean water over there yet because it's still early in the year. So you're gonna to wanna to run those high vis colors and those high contrast fluorescents. But if you're also looking just to take a, a jump, four guys jump in a truck, give Captain Chris from HLS Charters a call right there out of Astabula. Uh, his stuff will be on our website and as well as online or on Facebook. But he is an awesome charter captain right there out of the port of Ashtabula. We'll be bringing you reports every other week from this area. This is something that you need to try. You need to try that big water fishing, that deep water fishing, to show you what Lake Erie really can offer, even in the middle of the summer. Hey, so before we close, we're set up right here in front of our Dreamweaver Spin Doctor display at Captain Chuck's. And so you all know, this is the last time I'm gonna stand here in front of this display at Captain Chuck's old store here in downtown Ludington, because that's right, Scott's got a brand new store going in. They're gonna be open the week of the 4th of July. The week before that, they might be a little tough to contact them because they're gonna be moving all this great Dreamweaver and all their other great products over to the new location. So make sure when you do get to Ludington, you check out the new digs, the new store that's gonna have a lot more space, a lot more selection, and of course, all the selection you've come to enjoy. If you're a salmon fisherman, right down to a bluegill fisherman, Scott and the gang at Captain Chuck's has everything you need to keep you happy. So if you're passing through, or if you're gonna spend a week here in Ludington or a day here in Ludington, it's worth the stop to Captain Chuck's too, right here in downtown Ludington. Thanks for joining us on this week's Hot Bites Fishing Report. We'll see you out there on the water, or we'll see you back here next Wednesday for another edition of the Hot Bites Fishing Report.